artist Lillian Gray. And I have someone you need to meet, South African artist Esther Mshlangu. Esther Mshlangu is one of South Africa's most globally acclaimed visual artists. Esther became the first artist to transfer the traditional Hindabella designs that would typically decorate walls to canvases. And this allowed her to tour the world, acting as a global ambassador for South Africa and Ndebele art. She has collaborated with numerous respected museums, galleries, artists, curators, and entities during her illustrious career. But before we discuss Esarum Slangu, I need to tell you a bit more about the Hindabele tribe she is from. The Hindabele tribe lives in southern Africa, mainly up in the north of South Africa and also in Zimbabwe. They are known for their exceptional beadwork and their beautiful geometric patterns. During the 18th century, the Hindabele people of South Africa created their own tradition and style of painting their houses with these beautiful patterns. And today they are well known for this. However, it wasn't always like this. Let's take a little bit of a look at the evolution of the Hindabele wall paintings. Until the late 1900s, the Hindabele were noted warriors and large landowners. They often fought with rival tribes over land. But in the autumn of 1883, they went to war with the neighboring Boers. The Boers were settlers from Europe that came to farm in South Africa and they needed the land for their crops. The Ndebele tribe suffered a massive loss under the Boers, which brought on a harsh life and horrible punishments for the Ndebele. They had to move further north up into South Africa and Zimbabwe to make space for the settlers. They first settled in mud huts. First, the huts weren't decorated, but slowly a new culture emerged. They started to whitewash the houses with limestone. The women then started to draw various patterns with their fingers onto the walls. And these original designs were based on their beadwork. The colors added to make the paintings were mostly natural pigments consisting of browns, black and ochres. Most of the patterns were of a V-shape and a very simple triangle on a large shape of color. The patterns, earth tones, directions and size were more important than the present day vivid and bright colors. Over time, this style has developed and various colors were being added. These symbols and colors were used for communication between the subgroups of the Hindabele people. They developed their own secret language. The Boer farmers did not understand the meaning at all and just viewed it as cultural art that wasn't harmful. So it was allowed to continue. These wall paintings were done by the women with a secret code to their people, disguised to anyone but the Hindabele. And they started communicating war strategies, personal prayers, values, emotions, and announcing marriage on their house walls. Since the Hindabele wall designs are based on the original bead designs, the beads and the colors on the walls share the same meaning. Let's look at some of these meanings. It is important to note that each color or bead has a positive and a negative meaning, depicting the balance of life. Black symbolizes marriage and rebirth, and on the negative, death and sadness. Blue represents faithfulness and a special request, and on the negative side, hostility and dislike. Yellow showcases wealth and also represents the garden. The negative side represents thirst and withering. Green represents contentment. And on the flip side, discourse and illness. The pink patterns are one of the most important aspects in their communication through the painting. Pink stands for promise, high status of a family, but can also represent poverty and laziness. Red stands for love and strong emotions, but can also represent anger and heartache. The color white is always used as the background color of the wall because it makes the bright pattern stand out more. But the deeper meaning behind it is that it represents the spiritual realm, spiritual love and purity. 
Note that this is the only color that doesn't have a negative connotation as well. It only represents the positive. What is really interesting to me about the Hundebele culture is that women are the artists and men aren't really allowed to be artists. Compare this to the European tradition. During most of Western art history, women weren't quite allowed to be artists. It was frowned upon. We have so little female artists during the Renaissance and the Impressionism era. But in the Hindabele culture, the tradition of being an artist is passed on from grandmother to daughter to grandchild. Maybe this is because these wall patterns no longer share hidden wall strategies, but are now done annually with a very special ritual. The rite of passage for boys. Between the age of 18 and 20, the youth of the tribe go to a school of circumcision, the ritual that confirms their passage into adulthood. To celebrate this event, the women completely repaint the inside and the outside of their houses with the preparation of cow dung and natural pigments. Brightly colored acrylic paints are also applied in designs outlined by black. Although seemingly simple, the geometric abstraction that is revealed by these paintings is underscored by the constant repetition and symmetry of such simple shapes that make the whole work quite complex. A well-painted home shows the female of the household is a good wife and mother. She is responsible for painting the outside gates, the front walls, the side walls, and usually the interior of her house. The women work long and hard to finish these walls and are noticed by the outside community because of their talent and their expression. The development of modern paint has really changed the Hindabele art form. They no longer use natural pigments to paint, but rather acrylic paint. They also no longer use their fingers, but they actually use chicken feathers. Sorry, Mr. Chicken, please can I have your butt feather? So even though they use modern paint, they tend to avoid using paint brushes, but rather have this painstaking technique of painting with feathers. Lately, I've also seen Ndebele women use a toothbrush to make the straight black outlines on the wall. The advancement of tools and paint has allowed faster and more complex designs throughout the Ndebele homes. It also kind of stopped the tradition of them annually repainting the entire house inside and outside. Factory manufactured paint lasts much longer than natural pigments, so they tend to paint their houses not as often these days. Now that you know a little bit more about the Hindebele tribe, let's look at artist Esther Mishlangu's life and how she has made this Hindebele traditions world famous. Artist Esther Mishlangu was born in 1935 in Middleburg, Mpumalanga, South Africa, and she belonged to the South Ndebele people. Mishlangu began painting at the age of 10 years and was taught the skill of mural painting by her mother and grandmother, following a tradition of her native Ndebele people for females to paint the exterior of their houses. Esther became the first artist to transfer the traditional Hindabele designs that would typically decorate walls to canvases. She first gained international attention in 1989 at a European art exhibition titled Magicians of the World. It was a group exhibition and Esther exhibited large massive canvases depicting Hindabele geometric colorful patterns. Now, I want you other artists that are listening to note that Esther was at the age of 54 before anybody noticed her. And so many of our artists today are so impatient and want to be world famous overnight. After she exhibited in Europe, something awesome happened. In 1991, she was asked by BMW to create an art car. Now, have you guys actually heard of the art car? Art car is painted annually by famous artists across the world. Names like Andy Warhol, David Hockney and Frank Stella. The car was the first African art car and was painted with typical motifs of the Hindabele tribe. Esther was not only the first non-Western person 
but also the first female to design one of these art cars. This really propelled Esther's international art career forward. The car was later exhibited in the National Museum of Women in the Arts in Washington, D.C. It was also exhibited at the British Museum in London. In 1997, British Airways asked Esther to decorate the tails of their planes with her designs. It was so vibrant and so cool. Come on, South African Airways. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. The same technique was used by the artist to paint on the new Fiat 500 on the occasion of the exhibition Why Africa? Since then, stars have been lining up to work with Mshlango. So it came at no surprise when she teamed up with a Grammy award-winning singer and Belvedere Red Ambassador John Legend to help fight the fight against AIDS in Africa. The Nde Bele artwork was displayed on the Belvedere bottles marked with a red logo. 50% of the proceeds from the sales of those bottles went towards fighting HIV AIDS. In 2001, Mishlanga was represented with a series of six prints of drawings created by the late Nelson Mandela. She embellished these prints to create five paintings and a written motivation in 2004. Mishlangu exhibited the work which was well received by the art community. Mishlangu has gone on to enjoy various international exhibitions and she recently won the Arts and Culture Veteran Award at the Ubuntu Awards. She was nominated in the same category with Johnny Clegg for the award. She said in her speech, I am delighted and appreciate being regarded as a veteran for arts and culture for my country and representing my province. In 2016, BMW asked Eshram Schlangu to collaborate with them again, and she designed the internal panels for the BMW Individual 7 Series. She has collaborated with many international brands, but some of our home brands are also engaging. In 2018, Freshback collaborated with her, designing beautiful tea tins, honoring this great artist. Tiger Brands also collaborated with Eshram Schlangu they developed a series of products such as rice and bread decorated with her Ndebele patterns. In 2018, the University of Johannesburg decided to honor Mshlangu with an honorary doctorate for her legacy as a cultural entrepreneur and educator, skillfully negotiating local and global worlds. She received an honorary doctorate. Despite being an internationally loved and recognized artist, Eshram Shlangu lives in a village in close contact with her culture. Esther is passionate about conserving and promoting Hindabele culture and is considered by many a South African national treasure. Mshlangu directs a school which teaches young girls not only painting but also the technique of painting designs and particular compositions of beads. Esther Mshlangu has worked tirelessly exposing and developing her talent, traveling around the world, and she is very passionate about sharing her knowledge with the younger generation, so that she leaves a legacy that lives on for generations to come. Today, Dr. Esther Mshlangu is 83 years old, and she is known for being a cultural ambassador through her bold artworks that references her Hindabele heritage. The art of Esther Mshlangu highlights the tension between local and global, between the anchor and the detachment. And despite continuing to use the same artistic vocabulary closely tied to her traditions, Muslango has applied her designs to various objects, including canvas, sculpture, ceramics, automobiles, and even airplanes. She has also collaborated with both local and global brands, such as BMW, Fiat, Converse, Tiger Brands, Belvedere, the British Museum, and Rolls-Royce. In recent years, Mslanga's decades of work has been lauded and recognized internationally, making South Africa proud. And she did all of this by still being connected to her roots and using her traditional tools. So next time you want to moan about your art supplies, think of Dr. Esther Mshlangu that achieved world fame with this art kit. And that's it for my story about artist Esther Mshlangu. I'm artist Lillian Gray and I love teaching art history. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps our channel and to continue to deliver awesome art history lessons. Let's social, meet on Instagram or Facebook. We hope to see you soon. Until next time.